Well, it's a beautiful day to start some carrots. So we're gonna empty this old carrot pot. Might even be one or two carrots in there for using. But the saw that I put in there last year wasn't great. And I sowed too many carrots too close together. So a bit thinner this year. And then hopefully I move on into the polytunnel and see what's needed to get my candle, sweet candle F1 carrots underway. Last year they were fantastic. They got big, some of them split and forked, but most of them were good. So might try a different technique just to get them to go down and it'll be interesting. So let's get on with this. Well, that was surprising. I got a whole bunch of good eating carrots with no marks or anything on them. So that was a real bonus. And a whole load of marked and a bit soft carrots, but the chickens are gonna love those. So the plan now is to sieve this old soil, get rid of any snails or anything in it that I don't want, and then put fresh compost in that tub at the bottom, about that much, and then all the old compost on top. The purpose of that is to get the carrots to go straight down and look for that good compost. At least that's the plan. So, a bit of a mix around and we'll get going. So this barrel's got no bottom. That just helps with the drainage. So it's my opportunity to move it because it was pretty inconvenient there by the door. So I think I'm gonna have it just here. So I'm just gonna clear this bit of ground, make sure that I haven't got any weeds that are going to give me some trouble and then fresh compost in the bottom so this shouldn't take very long at all because i had a weed membrane here and i can still see it so that's perfect just get these odd bits of grass out of the way and then we can set it down and it's going to go just there awesome right fresh compost in the bottom so that's looking beautiful. We've got the well-used compost on the top and the good stuff underneath. And hopefully that'll be perfect for carrots. So into the polytunnel now and a look at the next one. So I really got to dig down and get rid of this bindweed. I've got a bit in here. So that's going to be the first job. And then when I've got that out, it'll have loosened it up, which isn't ideal. And this isn't a traditional polytunnel carrot bed, which invariably these tall beds are made with sand and then a tube of compost is what you grow into. But this is full of old compost. So I'm gonna clean it out and then I'm gonna tamp it down, get it nice and firm. And then I'm gonna try putting some tubes in uh, to get a cylinder of soil out and put some fresh in that and I'm going to plant into those cylinders of fresh soil so that's the plan and we'll see how I get on well there's the first 10 holes and I'm going to fill those because as I work my way across the soil falls back into the hole and I'm going to just put something pointy down there as well just to get as deep as they possibly can that's what came out which isn't too bad i've had a lot worse so that should be okay and then i'm going to sieve some compost so that it's really very fine because a carrot it only has to hit something small and off it goes in a different direction so you want it to be as fine as you can and hopefully that good soil is what they'll go down and search for, making them a long pointy carrot. We'll see. That's looking good. We've got one, two, three, four, five, 25 carrots in there, which is just plenty. And these aren't gonna be competition carrots. I'd be lying if I wasn't gonna try and grow a straight long carrot, but they're for eating. That's the main thing. So I'm gonna water those in, those 
bits of good quality compost and that'll probably just sink them down a little bit and I'll probably end up topping them up a fraction and then it's on to sowing. So both these varieties of carrots, Sweet Candle F1 and the Early Nant 2, which I'm going to sow outside, both of them are 2021 seed packets. And if you're going to sow this few and take your time over how you prepare, you best have some fresh seed. And you don't get an awful lot of seed in these F1 varieties. So I'm going to sow those and I'm going to put probably three in each station just so I make sure I get a germination in each one. If for any reason all three fail then I'll move one from another station and then as they get going I'll choose the strongest one and just clip the two that I don't want to keep and that way you make sure you get every one of these firing away which is fantastic. And then the early non two as I said, I sowed them a bit close together last year. So I think I'm gonna just sow them fairly lightly. There we go, all set onto the early nant. So as I say, I need to be just a bit more cautious with these this time, as I have far, far too many all close together. So I'm gonna broadcast so, but I am gonna be careful. And I think I might end up just thinning them out once they get going. So these are going on the surface and then I'll put just a very small amount of fresh compost sifted across the top. I am getting carried away here, I know. But I figure thinning them out might be the best way once I can see where they are. That'll do. Okay. it says a quarter of an inch so I'm just going to give them a good dusting and then a course of water Well, I think that's all the warm weather seeds in. So I'm really feeling back on top. What I have got to do is get those sweet peas into the ground. So I'm going to build some wigwams and get the sweet peas in. I think they'll be hardy enough in these cooler nights. And that'll make me a bit of space as well. So the cold frame is probably where most of my seedlings that I don't use will be going into. So as I plant things out, all the spares go in there and that just keeps them ticking over. So the cold frame is pretty useful to me in the summer months. Okay, wigwams. So this is my sweet peas from my saved seed last year. And you may have seen in an earlier video, I pinched them all out just to make them more bushy. And they're looking great. And there's a few here from the polytunnel. So I'm going to spread them out evenly amongst the two wigwams and then get them in the ground.
a fantastic root system on these. And I'm going to put them in as a whole clump because they'll soon find their way up this structure and get going. And this way you don't disturb them too much. Well, that's it for today. It's been a pretty productive day all in all. After a fairly heavy set of showers and rain, everything's looking quite lush. And it's been great getting things into the ground. Although it's still really only the more hardy stuff because we're still in for a few more cold nights today if you did click the subscribe button click the like button and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video click the bell and select all I do hope you have a great day Diochenbach